السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطيع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما 
أما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل بدعة ضلالة uh, my dear respected brothers, as always, I begin by humbly requesting that you turn off these electronic devices, cell phones, and pagers which have a tendency to ring at the most inopportune time and disturb us during our ibadah. I also humbly request, as always, that you open your ears, your minds, and your hearts to what I'm about to say. Today, inshallah, ta'ala, brothers and sisters, we will continue our discussion of the paths to achieving certainty and yaqeen. And today we'll discuss the path of knowing the Prophet ﷺ, his life, and what he possessed of unimpeachable character and admirable qualities. Brothers and sisters, anyone with a clean heart and an open mind who sincerely and truthfully studies the Prophet ﷺ. Studies the Prophet, studies what he stood for, studies what he brought, what he called to. That person cannot possibly question his truthfulness or the truth of the religion he taught. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us this in a roundabout way in the Quran. He says, أَمْ لَمْ يَعْرِفُوا رَسُولَهُمْ فَهُمْ لَهُ مُنْكِرُونَ He says, do they not know their messenger? And hence, they deny him. Some of the scholars of Tafsir, when they explained this ayah, they said, A. مَعْرِفَتُهُ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ تُوْجِبُ لِلْعَبْدِ الْمُبَادَرَةِ إِلَى الْإِيمَانِ مِمَّنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ وَزِيَادَةَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْيَقِينَ مِمَّنْ آمَنَ بِهِ The scholars of Tafsir, they said in, in, in a roundabout way what means, it means this ayah. Do they not know the messenger? And that's why, and that's why they deny him? Allah is saying it means that truly knowing him requires the one who knows him but has yet to believe to hasten to believe. And it increases the one who believes in the certainty of his belief. If you know them, if you believe, and you study the life of the Prophet and you study his character, you can't help but what? Increase your iman and reach the level of al yaqeen In other words, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, the only way a person can disbelieve in him and disbelieve in what he brought is because they don't truly know him and know what he stood for. Now, knowing the Prophet ﷺ, in particular, it means knowing his character. The Prophet's character was of the highest caliber. And he was the most exceptional human being in terms of his conduct. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Noon. Wal-Qalami wa ma yasturoon. Ma anta bi ni'mati rabbika bi majnoon. Wa inna laka la ajran ghayra mamnoon. Allah says about this beloved Prophet of ours, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Noon, I swear by the pen and by what the angels write of the deeds of men. You, O Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, are not by the grace of your Lord insane. And for you there is a reward that will never end. And indeed you possess exceptional moral character. And this is why, brothers and sisters, we find that almost everyone who knew him and spent some time with him, interacted with him, without exception almost, all of them speak glowingly of his character. All of them speak with amazement of the character of this beloved Prophet wasallam. For example, Aisha, his beloved wife, and who knows a man better than his wife? She said, radiallahu anha, مَنْ تَقَمَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم لِنَفْسِهِ إِلَّا أَن تُنْتَاكْ مَحَرْمُ اللَّهِ 
فَيَنْتَقِمُ لِلَّهِ فَيَنْتَقِمُ لِلَّهِ بِهَا She said the Prophet ﷺ never took revenge on his own behalf. No one ever struck the Prophet and he struck back out of revenge for his own self. No one ever called him a name and he called him a name back out of revenge for his own self. إِلَّا أَن تُنْتَاكِ مَحَرَمَ اللَّهِ Only when the law of Allah was violated would he take revenge for Allah's sake, not for his own sake. Anas ibn Malik used to serve the Prophet. Serve the Prophet for how many years? Ten years. Who knows a man better than his servant? Everywhere the Prophet went, Anas went. Nobody knows the Prophet better than Anas. He said, radiallahu anhu, خدم تو رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عشر سنين فوالله ما قال لي أف قط ولا لي شيء فعلته لما فعلت كذا I'm sorry لما فعلت كذا ولا لي شيء لم أفعله ألا فعلت كذا وكان أجود الناس وأجمل الناس وأشجع الناس وكان أحسن الناس خلقا أنا سيسد I served the Messenger of Allah for 10 years. I swear by Allah, he never once said, oof, to me. Come on. You interact and know someone for 10 years, and they never say something that just annoys you to the point that you say, oof, 10 years. And the Prophet never said, wallahi. He never said, oof, to me. And he never said to me regarding something I had done. Why did you do that? Nor something that I did not do. Why didn't you do that? He was the most generous, handsomest, bravest individual, and he was the best of people in character. Abdullah ibn Amr, he said about the Prophet Lam yakun Rasulullah fahishan wala mutafahishan. He said the Messenger of Allah was neither indecent nor profane. Never said a curse word. Never said a bad word. Never said something that somebody said, oh, man, he shouldn't have said that. Never. And all the time that Abdullah ibn Amr accompanied the Prophet ﷺ, never heard him say something inappropriate. Abdullah ibn Salam, who was a Jew who converted to Islam, he said, قَدِمَ النَّبِيُّ صلى الله عليه وسلم المدينة فَجِلْتُ فِي النَّاسِ لِأَنْظُرَ لِأَنْظُرَ إِلَيْهِ فَلَمَّا اسْتَبَنَتْ لِي فَلَمَّا اسْتَبَنْتُ وَجْحَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم عَرَفْتُ أَنَّ وَجْحَهُ لَيْسَ بِوَجْهِ Kadhab. Abdullah ibn Salam, he said, when the Prophet first arrived in Medina, I came along with others to see him. When I got close enough to see his face clearly, I knew then and there, his face was not the face of a liar. Yet another way, brothers and sisters, that knowing the Prophet Wasallam can increase us in our certainty or cause us to reach the level of certainty, is by pondering the highly sensible message that he preached. During the Prophet's time, throughout history and even up to now, even up to our time, there are people, brothers and sisters, and have been people, who have accepted, embraced Islam after hearing one, two, or a few of his sayings. They hear one or two of the Prophet's hadith, and they accept Islam. And some people will say to them, why are you in such a hurry to accept Islam? You don't know all the details. You don't know what you're getting into. And those people respond because it makes sense. These words are not the words of someone who is an, an imposter. In the early period, people would come, meet the Prophet, hear him say one or two things and accept Islam. And the people at that time would say, why are you in such a rush to become a Muslim? Why are you in such a rush to believe in Muhammad Wasallam? when you haven't heard all the details of his faith. And those people would reply, one of them, in fact, one of them, he said, he said, ما عمر بشيء فقال العقل ليته نهى عن وما نهى عن شيء فقال العقل ليته أمر به. They used to say, he does not encourage anything. To which the mind replies, if only he had discouraged it. And he does not discourage anything to which the mind replies, if only he had encouraged it. So in other words, brothers and sisters, this religion that the Prophet ﷺ brought, it makes sense. And this is yet another reason why we as Muslims should be 100% muqineen, certain of its truth.
É de manhã. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka nabina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Finally, brothers and sisters, knowing the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam can also help us to achieve certainty if we consider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many places in the Quran has told us that the most heinous criminal the greatest wrongdoer, the worst transgressor, is the one who forges a lie against Allah and falsely claims prophethood. In one example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He says, who commits a greater crime? than someone who invents a lie against Allah or says, I have received revelation when nothing was revealed to him. He also tells us, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that if the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had falsely attributed anything to him, even a few words, brothers and sisters, if the Prophet just said a few words that Allah didn't say and attributed those words to Allah, Allah tells us in the Qur'an that he would have swiftly seized him with a severe torment. On the spot, he would have exposed his treachery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, he says, وَلَوْ تَقَوَّلَ عَلَيْنَا بَعْضَ الْأَقَوِيلِ لَأَخَذْنَا مِنْهُ بِالْيَمِينَ ثُمَّ لَقَطَعْنَا مِنْهُ الْوَتِينَ فَمَا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ عَنْهُ حَاجِزِينَ Allah, he says, had Muhammad falsely attributed even a few words to us, we would have surely seized him by his right arm. Then we would have cut off his life artery, his aorta. And not a single one of you would have been able to protect him from us. Now, brothers and sisters, I want you to consider that the Prophet ﷺ, he preached for 23 years. And in that 23 year span, he described Allah. He spoke about Allah, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does what he says, what he has, what he doesn't have. How he's supposed to be described, what attributes he has, what names by which he should be called, etc. Described, Allah spoke in detail about Allah Jalla Jalaluhu Aduma Sultan. Described as angels, described paradise and hell, legalized things, made other things illegal, and punished those people who, who violated the laws he imposed. And he attributed and ascribed all of that to Allah. Allah told me that he has this, that he does this, he says this. He has this name, he has this attribute. Allah told me that and told me to tell you that. Told me his angels are like this, told me paradise is like this, hell is like that. Told me this should be made legal. This should be illegal, and the people who do this should be punished like that. He has attributed all of that to Allah. And in 23 years, Allah never seized him. Allah never took him by his right arm and cut off his life artery. Rather, Allah, for 23 years, he supported him. Supported him in ways that defy logic, that defy the laws of nature. Supported him with miracles. Not only this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered his prayers. He would pray to Allah and Allah would answer his prayers. Allah gave him victory after victory after victory over his enemies. Allah allowed him to have many followers, numerous followers. His followers just kept increasing and keep increasing to this day. Fastest growing religion on the earth, the religion of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And on top of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed his religion to reach the four corners of the earth, there's not a buqah, there's not a place on the earth except you will find a Muslim. All this support and all this aid can only be explained. The only way we can understand this is that this Prophet Muhammad Wasallam is truly the messenger of Allah. And the religion he brought is truly the religion of Allah. 
We can't be, we, we, we can't help but be convinced of this fact. And so this shows us, brothers and sisters, that pondering, knowing the Prophet and pondering his life is yet another path that will enable us to achieve this elusive but extremely important quality of al yaqeen certainty. Allahumma is the Islam and Muslimin. What did the shirk and the mushrikeen? What did the aada'ak aada al milati wa din? One sura ibadik al muwahidin ya Rabbi al alamin. Allahumma man aradana. Aw arada dina na aw akhwan Muslimin fi ayi makan bi su in fa ashqilhu fi nafsi. Wajal kaidahu fi nahri. Wajal tadbirahu tadmin alayhi ya qawiyu ya aziz. ربنا اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اشفي مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم انا لا ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم انا نسالك الهدى وال... اللهم انا نسالك الهدى والتقى والافاف والغنى اللهم انا نسالك الهدى والتقى والافاف والغنى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنه وفي الاخره حسنه وقنا عذاب النار وقوموا الى صلاتكم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين والضحى والليل إذا سجى ما ودعك ربك وما قلى وللآخرة خير لك من الأولى ولسوف يعطيك ربك فترضى ألم يجدك يتيما فآوى ووجدك ضالا فهدى ووجدك عائلا فأغنى فأما اليتيم فلا تقهر وأما السائل فلا تنهر وأما بنعمة ربك فحدث الله أكبر سميع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله 
Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm Al-Din Iyaka Na'abudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladhina An'amta Alayhi غير المغضوب عليهم والطالين آمين أرأيت الذي يكذب بالدين فذلك الذي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله 